Hi, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now, as you do, I was browsing the Banggood website to see what new products are coming out of China, and I came across this. Now, it's an SWR and power meter that supports, or supposedly supports, up to 200 watts throughput between the frequency range of 1.8 megahertz up to 54 megahertz. Now, that's 160 meters all the way up to 6 meters handband and all those frequencies in between. Now that 200 watt rating is for SSB, PEP. So if you're wanting to use FM or any of the other digital modes along with CW, then keep the power to less than 120 watts, which I think in most cases is more than okay, considering the average black box HF radio these days have a 100 watt output as standard. Now I think what attracted me to this was the large screen, which incidentally is 4.3 inches. It's also color and it's touchscreen. Now the whole thing weighs around 800 grams and it has a 4,000 milliamp hour internal rechargeable battery, which is charged using the USB port on the rear. Now with a size and weight, you could potentially take this portable if you wanted to, and that's down to the fact that it has that rechargeable battery. But I guess the choice is yours whether you wanna put an extra 800 grams in your backpack. Now I didn't get a USB-C cable in the box, and that's probably a good thing for me because I literally have hundreds of them laying around. But if you don't have one, then they're easily purchased from the likes of Amazon and eBay. Even your local petrol station will most likely have one. Now on the rear, there's a power switch, the USB-C socket for charging, and of course the input and output connections, which are in the form of SO239, which is what we would expect when dealing with sub 50 megahertz signals. Now, when powered on, you get this nice little boot screen, which welcomes you to use the digital SWR meter. Now, if you tap the screen, a little menu appears, and this allows you to change the screen's brightness using a little slider bar, and then you can set an automatic power off time, just in case you forget that you've left it turned on. There's an SWR alarm, so that if your SWR of your antenna reaches this point, then it will trigger an alarm. You then have a calibration menu where you can adjust the forward power and SWR reading. However, I would only recommend to adjust these if you have a calibrated test gear set to compare it with. So let's attach a dummy load and then we'll attach a patch lead from one of my HF transceivers. We'll just do some transmission tests to see how each of these meters react. So across the top, we have a bar graph which shows forward power. And if you look closely, the standard scale is zero to 25 watts. But then when I key up with an FM signal around 50 watts, that top bar graph scale changes from zero to 125. Now I don't have any radios that go above 100 watts RF, but I guess if I did, then that scale will change to zero to 200 watts. In fact, there's actually two bar graphs at the top there. There's a yellow bar, which appears to be like a peak hold, and then there's the green one, which is in real time. Now, underneath that top two bar graphs, there's an SWR bar graph, which moves in real time as you're transmitting. Below this, there's some other interesting readings. You've got the P max, which is like a max hold, and you can see the peaks, and then you have reflected power in watts. Then you've got power at the antenna, I presume, and then you've got efficiency, and then in large text, we have the forward power and SWR reading. Testing one, two, three, testing one, two, three. This is Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey testing, uh, M Zero DQW testing, uh, testing one, two, three, four, five. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey over. Now the cost of this was around 80 pound at the time of making this video. And if you like colorful displays with the need to see real time SWR and power, from 54 megahertz and below, then this kind of makes a nice little meter. Now, for those of you that want to see inside, don't worry, I've got you covered. The top case is just held in place with two screws either side and taking the lid off, this is what we can see. The board at the rear of the meter where the SO239 connectors are, most likely incorporates an SWR bridge, plus a whole load of other little electronics. We can then see the 4,000 milliamp hour rechargeable battery stuck to the bottom of the case. Now if we turn it around, we can see the rear of the LCD panel with another little circuit board. And weirdly enough, it looks like there's a micro SD card slot on the top of that board. 
Maybe that's used for firmware updates or maybe it's just not used for anything. Now I'll leave a link in the description if you'd like to see more information on this SWR power meter. But that's about it really with this. There's not much more I can say. So if you have seen this on websites, then there you go. This is what it looks like when it's in use. Anyway, to the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.